Rick, how you doing? Well, good morning, Keith Jones. I'm fine. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing great, man. I'm I'm really, really doing great. Uh, the title of this podcast is inspired by a physician at Mayo Clinic who I've crossed paths with, and there's always just this love and you know mutual affinity for each other and respect. And we don't talk often, man. It's just you know we just the way that we inter- we greet each other is just full of love and kindness. And so one day, well, the title of this podcast is, well, I'll, t- I'll tell you this and then I'll tell you what the title is because okay. it's his response. So I said, how you doing? You know, his, his name is uh, Dr. Nathan Delafield. And, you know, we call each other by first name. So I was like, Nathan, how you doing, man? He's like, I'm doing Keith, man. I'm doing great, Keith, man. I'm busy. He said, I know you are too, man. I see you everywhere, man. Your name everywhere. I said, yeah, I'm busy too. He said, but you know, man, you know what? He says, you can't complain your plate is full when your goal is to eat. Mm-hmm. And I just said, Nathan, can I do a podcast on that? Because that's beautiful. <laughs> and I think about that kind of stuff like all the time, Rick. And uh, and most recently, you know, when I came to Mayo Clinic, I was just so incredibly, you know, grateful to be there that I came very quickly to this idea that at the end of every day, no matter what happened, uh how busy it was or, you know, understaffed. There was a lot on my plate or somebody said something to me that hit my personal stuff in ways that, that, you know, bothered me or whatever. I was going to make sure that I was absolutely active, present and attentive and shaping the day. Like I wanted it, like I wanted it to be, which was to be a wonderful experience that I'm going to honor because I had another day to, to you know, I had another day on the earth. And um, and so when he said that, when I came to Mayo Clinic, I want to be every night, go to bed. I want to be say, man, it's been a good run. If I don't wake up in the morning, oh, it's been a good run today. And so when he said that, I never complain at Mayo Clinic about how busy I am. I never complain about when somebody tells me, hey, we need you to do this or or can you do this? or we can't see you uh, for this, or I can't help with this. Whatever the case may be, uh, I never get upset because of what Nathan said. Man, there was a day. (laughs) I wasn't at Mayo Clinic. And I mean, you know, uh, the coin purse, when you shook it, there was no coin shaking together. (laughs) There was no sound, Rick. (laughs) And it wasn't because I had paper notes in there. There was no change. (laughs) And I said, man, if I get a crack at this, you know, I didn't say this, but I just knew that if there was any, whatever happened in my life, the smallest thing to the biggest thing, I was going to be incredibly grateful for. And it speaks right to what Nathan said. You can't complain your plate is full when your goal is to eat. And so that's exactly what I think, man. I I live in Arizona, man. I get to breathe and yeah. just just be amazing, you know, just uh, be a man around some amazing people, have incredible experiences. And I was like, man, this life is so good. Oh, mm-hmm. man, it is so good. And, and the reason I see it that way is because I remember when I had life this good before, but because I wasn't working on myself, I, I just noticed everything that was wrong. And now I just see it completely different, man. I don't complain about my plate, Rick. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Not at all, Rick. I just, just, I'm happy to be eating, Rick. So, what do you think about, you know, Nathan's uh, quote in perspective? I, well, I want to meet the guy. That's fantastic. <laughs> and he came up with that idea because it was a, kind of a way for him to remind himself, right? That, you know, he was on the wrong track here, complaining about stuff that really was what he his life life work is is about right yeah. I, I i guess i get a couple of things out of that the, f- the first thing is to me the, the real cool thing in life is that you get to do whatever the hell you want you know i mean pretty much you, we have a lot of things we can't do but 
by and large, the things we can are so much, much more. I mean, there's a longer list of stuff you can do, but they may be simple things. You know, the stuff we want to do, like earn a million dollars and not have to pay taxes, <laughs> you know, that that's not a pretty short list. But the stuff like go outside and breathe the air and enjoy your life or uh, appreciate someone kissing you or or thanking you for a job well done. Those are free and they're easy to, to come by if you live the, uh, the, the, the right path life. Um, I guess what I'm thinking is that plateful to me means living a life that is rich that is deeply, deeply lived. The personal life that's deeply lived, mm. I think actually expands into something that reveals truths right. that you, you're not even aware of when you're living a life. Right. So a deeply lived life, is, in a way, is, is a way of creating an expansion into a world of truth beyond itself. Right. So I, I like that. I like Nathan's concept. I think that's fantastic. And I bet you he would say also that even though he's terribly busy, that, that be, even though he's busy, he's feeling fulfilled in his work. He's feeling fulfilled in his career. He's feeling fulfilled that he's helping others. And I think his prob his default state is probably happiness. He's it, probably it, irritated because he's because he's you know busy. But happiness is a default state, and, and and the reason why it's a default state is when you when you remove all of the um, the stuff that we think we're missing, you know, uh, when you remove all of that, then happiness usually is what's underneath it. Absolutely, and identifying what's missing, I mean, a lot of that comes from the personal mind, right? About what yeah. it thinks, you know, you should have and it be experiencing. And the other point, you know, that I'll say about, you know, Nathan, that was just really beautiful is that his plate being full is full of all the things that he would want. Yeah. You know? yeah I mean, that's, that's and, and right. he's, you know, he wants to, he loves caring for patients, loves it. He loves contributing to his colleagues, you know? Uh, and, you know, there are, there's these other opportunities that may not have been on his, his, his top 10 list with, you know, dealing with technology along the way. But I imagine that he's be if he hasn't done this, he's starting to see technology as a partner, which allows him to grow, to learn and, and develop and really uh, activate that growth mindset to learn something new and how it's done. But also as a partner, it makes, it, it helps him to care for patients even better, you know, to be there for his colleagues in ways that he would be limited without it. So it's just, it's just beautiful, man. I just think about, you know, people always come up to me because, you know, I've been given this great opportunity at Mayo Clinic to serve in so many different ways that sometimes it might seem like I'm everywhere, but I'm not, uh, you know, I've, I've left kindness behind. And so maybe that's what people are feeling uh, when they walk into a space that I'm, I'm no longer in. And, and that's a good thing. Uh, but I don't complain about what I have to do at Mayo. I don't say, man, I got to go to another meeting, you know, uh, because I remember when I wasn't at Mayo, man, I would have loved to have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Please put a meeting on my schedule. <laughs> and, and, I, and, you know, and I don't complain about who the meetings are with, you know, like at all. It's to be read, man, when, you know, uh, I've been when we've had 60 people show up at a track workout. Yeah. And I've been there when just one shows up, my friend Gabe and I, you know, and and I remember being grateful for Gabe. <laughs> like, what's the alternative? Nobody's showing up, <laughs> you know? And if that's the case, I'd accept that, man. But I'm not complaining about this full plate, Rick. I'm not complaining about the, this, this amazing opportunity that we have. And Michael Singer says it, you're on a planet spinning, spinning in the middle of nowhere. And you got the audacity to be bothered by things that don't even matter. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, you could be, you know, on a planet to where there's no water, <laughs> there's there, 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 there's there's no oxygen, there's no there's no beauty in mountains and skies and the weather, you know, whether it's tornadoes or sunshine, like you could be in somewhere really, really boring, but you hear, like you 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 were you were given this gift to be here. And the audacity to complain about a full plate, mm. or 
to be casting your eye on somebody else's plate to say, oh, they got more than I did. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> no, man, it's just, stay on your plate. Stay, I'm staying, Keith Jones is staying on his plate. And uh, man, my plate is beautiful, Ray. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful. Yeah, I can tell you're a, you're a reflection of your plate. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. It's full and deep and uh, a beautiful thing for others to be part of and to feel the effect of. Exactly. I, I, t I totally agree, Rick. And I'm just, I'm just super grateful and humbled. And I just want to wake up every day, man, and just honor this gift that we are given, that I'm given. I'm so grateful. I love you, Rick. I love you, Keith. Great show. Thank you. Thank you.